Hola, football lovers of the world. My name is Giuseppe. Welcome back on the channel. I hope you're all doing well. Yes, you heard me while I said hola instead of ciao. Why? Because we are in La Liga. I just watched Osasuna against Real Madrid. Watching that performance of Valverde, I wanted to put the camera on and record. What a performance of Valverde. Can we speak about it? Combining quality and quantity. And when you have a midfielder that is able to combine both we have a fantastic midfielder. Yes, I spoke about quality. If you don't believe me, go and watch the highlights. That control, the difficulty level of that control on that second assist that he's doing, controlling it in the box and immediately that assist is just epic. Outstanding from Valverde, but also quantity. Not one, not two, but a hat-trick of assist from Valverde. Fantastic. I really enjoyed him. I don't know who will win the MVP because it's true. Vinicius scored not one, but two goals and missed a few other ones. But according to me, it can't be anyone else than Valverde. So we speak about Valverde, but of course also about Real Madrid watching. I was super, super curious to understand how Real Madrid will play because on the 9th of April, big game against City. So I was a bit preparing myself. I was really curious if there would be a game between Osasuna before the game, before the first whistle of the referee, 10th, Real Madrid first. Well, there was a game, not for long, that's true. There was a game for a few minutes. And then I want to ask, why Arda Guler? When you are winning already, 4-1, why do you sub him in only at the 85th minute? especially if you watch what he did at the end of the game. We'll come back on that. So if you want more recaps of random games, La Liga, Premier League, Serie A, whatever I'm watching, let me know in the comments. Also, maximum of like. Don't forget to subscribe because now we start with Osasuna against Real Madrid. I told you there was a game. There was a game. I was asking myself after Champions League, before the international break, how will Real Madrid play? How will Real Madrid play? With a lot of rotation, with not a lot of rotations, I was really curious. Without Bellingham, also understanding it, of course, you know, or at least this is what you expect, that Real Madrid would win. But in what way? Well, that game starts immediately with Osasuna that is pressing. They are at home, they want to do something, they want to show something, and they go up offensively, of course. They forget that in front, even if Bellingham is not there, well, you have Abraham Diaz, you have Rodrigo, and especially you have that monster of Vinicius Jr. Third minute, we didn't have to wait long. I believe that until that moment, Real Madrid, they didn't even touch the ball. There is a control from the defender there. There is that control pressing from Vinicius on Catena that I don't know what he's doing. Instead of going to the right, to the left, to the goalkeeper, whatever, put it out. Well, he's waiting with that ball as the last man. Pressing from Vinicius, Vinicius, Easily taking that ball one on one on the goalkeeper. What do you expect that he will miss at the third minute? He's just fresh. He couldn't even believe in his eyes that this would happen that early into the game with Real Madrid that didn't even touch the ball before that. Well, it's goal. Of course, it's goal. It's a 1 0. You know what I loved from Real Madrid is the attitude. For example, at the 35th or 40th second, you see immediately after the ball went out, you see a a duel between Rudiger and a player, Arezzo, from Osasuno. They are going one-to-one. -one. It just started. And that shows that Rudiger is not there just because it's a friendly game, because they know... No, they, he wants to go all-in. Even if it's the 30th second of the game, he wants to go all-in. That behavior, that attitude of the fighter, of the one that doesn't want to give up, well... That shows immediately that Real Madrid is there to win. And at the end, if you see the score, 4-2, they win. They win as simple as that. But the thing is, they didn't forget, or probably they forgot, that even if Real Madrid is the one that scores the most goals on corner kick in La Liga this season, nine times, well, that the second best team was Osatuna. Seven goals scored. And that's how they score. On a corner kick, that ball is coming. An assist. Because he's going over everyone. Boom, an assist. And then a really, really, really beautiful goal. That equalizer was fantastic from Budimir. Budimir already scored with that one included. 15 goals in La Liga. Right behind Bellingham with 16. That will be, according to me, a really beautiful fight there in La Liga. More than understanding who will win La Liga. Because with that victory, Real Madrid is climbing. 
even if the other one they will win today, the gap is still there. And I believe that at the end, Real Madrid will win. Los Blancos will win another La Liga. Well, that big fight to understand, will it be Morata? Will it be Budimir? Will it be the striker of Girona? Will it be Bellingham? That's a big question. It's not that important. Who cares at the end? But you never know. I like that kind of competition there between the strikers. 1-1 one, one, immediately after seven minutes. I'm like... Ooh, today will be a beautiful one, especially because a few minutes later, at the 80th minute, it's the 2-1. I told you already about Brahim Diaz passing that ball, a bit, you know, mid height that control in the box of Valverde. Go and watch it. I can't describe it because I would love to stand up to show you, but it's impossible. It's too beautiful. Control immediately passing in the back. And then you have a beautiful goal there from Carvajal. Carvajal already fourth goal this season in La Liga. That's beautiful, eh? especially from a defender that never scores that much. Actually, the season is still busy. He already scored four goals, which is nice, which is absolutely nice. The contribution of Daniel Carvajal this season, captain of Real Madrid with the number two on the back, is beautiful. And then, unfortunately, it's a bit, it's a bit annoying. From there on, it's annoying. It's a boring game. From the 20th until the 40th minute, not a lot of things happened. We saw Vinicius again, a one-on-one -on -one to the goalkeeper. This time he missed it because he was that confident about himself. Because he already scored one time, he was sure that he would score. And you clearly see the behavior of Vinicius when he's too confident, when he's overconfident. That's when he missed. That's when he missed. And he missed it. Then a yellow card, and that's the thing that annoys me. He received that yellow card and he continued to speak, to protest. He's not happy. Controversy here and this and blah, blah and blah, blah. Also in the second half, already having that yellow card, he continues. Every time that he's not happy with the decision, with a corner kick that is not given to him, with a foul that is not given to him. But that's annoying. Look, the next game of Real Madrid, he will miss it because of an accumulation of yellow cards. He continue. He can risk to reopen that game. Luckily for him, the referee didn't give another one, even if it was not. But he needs to learn. He needs to grow. Otherwise, it will always be like that. But then, luckily, in the second half, opens again at the 61st minute. Well, opens. Opens the second half because at the end, I, I actually, it closed the game. Again, a beautiful assist. This time with a header in the back. Even a little injured Valverde on the ground. And then a goal of uh, Diaz. What a velocity. The guy is fast. He's really fast. The guy that was slow in choosing between Spain and Morocco for the national team. Well, here, when he saw that ball, he was extremely fast. And it's a photocopia. It's the copy of that first goal. Again, a one-on-one. -on -one. I believe that Osasuna in the back, even if they wanted to do something, even if they wanted to show something, if you do these kind of horror mistakes in the bag, if you leave so much space, and if you don't learn from your mistakes, then of course you will finish 10th, 12th. And you can't go and compete to exit in Europe. Anyway, three minutes later, another goal, another beautiful assist from who? From Valverde. And this time the brace of Vinicius and also their velocity. You can't stop him. When he, probably because he missed two attempts before, and that confidence he lost it a bit well he was a bit more precise a beautiful goal i was watching the stat he had only 16 percent of possibilities to score that goal because the goal the goalkeeper was really well the angle was a bit close and he's able to score it huh? beautiful no chapeau really when he when he is behaving correctly vinicius is a fantastic player so really beautiful then of course the game is going boring 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 and then i watched at a certain moment in the stand it was written osasuna nunca se rinde do you remember that it went totally viral at a certain moment nunca se rinde means they never give up they never stop but actually it's true huh because they pushed, well, they pushed, they tried until the end, and at the end they are finding that 2-4 in the really last minutes with a beautiful goal. It was beautiful, huh? from uh, Munoz at the 91st minute, it was over. Huh? Could they go maybe for a 3-4? Why not? But Real Madrid already stopped playing at that certain moment. Uh, strange, strange, we don't see it that much 
four subs, the four first subs of the game arrived at the 69th minute, all of them from Osasuna. Four in one time to change a bit the game. It didn't change that much at the end. But anyway, when it is 4-1, the coach is trying. Ancelotti waited a bit. And who is he putting in when you are already winning 4-1? When you already know the four players that were subbed from Osasuna? Well, he's playing Modric and he's playing Nacho. You know, the a bit veterans. Is it more out of respect for these players? Because in a way or another, they are there since long time at Real Madrid. They are giving everything. You know, like a thank you for your longevity. We are winning 4-1 play. But on the other side... <sighs> I see Arda Guler on the bench. And I know Young, he comes from an injury in the beginning of the season. I understand everything. But you can't at a certain moment on a 4-1 against Osasuna when it's already done. Play the guy. Play him. You can't wait until the 85th minute to put him in. Especially if you see that the guy, excuse me if I'm saying it, but he has a lot of balls. 93rd minute, he's taking that ball. From midfield, <laughs> touching the bar. Unfortunately, the post, boom. But when you are 18 or 19, and you, these are your first games with Real Madrid, and you already tried that, if the goal is scored there, he finished on the front pages. Eh? He will probably not. Probably it will be Vinicius or Valverde. But the guy totally deserves He deserves more playing time. That's my conclusion. It, it can't stay for that long on the bench. The two other things that really made me laugh were at the 89th minute, you have the goalkeeper of uh, Osasuna that is taking that ball, Herrera, putting it out of the goal. And he's touching the camera there. You know the camera that is in the sky, that kind of drone, I don't know, boom. He's touching it and you really see that the ball is going so and it stops, it comes back. So if you don't know what happened in these kind of cases, the referee is taking the ball and uh, it gives it back to El Sasuna. Not from there, but from where it fell on the ground. So that's a new rule if you never know. But it was really, really, really funny. And the ultimate thing that really made me laugh was when they drew at the 91st minute, when it was 2-4, I heard that music in the stadium of, you know, the guy that is commenting... Um, in the stadium, you know, that voice with the microphone. It was like, I don't know, they won the Champions League, then music party, everyone was singing and dancing in the stadium. Was was nice. I'm not, of course, they were not expecting to win against Real Madrid. I can understand it. And for them, it was a party already to play against the first one in La Liga, the one that will play against City in a few weeks. But I have to say, it was really, really, really nice to see. On the other side, I'm not used when you're losing 2-4, to celebrate like that but uh it is, it is what it is it was nice to see my takeaway for the game of manchester city is when real madrid they decide we close the game they close the game they they can close the game in a few minutes that was it i hope you enjoyed maximum fly don't forget to subscribe osasuna real madrid we covered it grazie hola ciao adios